By the way, something occurs to me from the morning paper, uh, an old, an old uh, cliché from the New York Times, all the news that's fit to print. Please meditate a little bit on that phrase. And um, it's full of ambiguities. It's a, it's a real lulu. But um, in practice, the New York Times prints all news in a form that suits the printed page. It doesn't print news, it doesn't matter what the news is, it doesn't print news in an auditory way. Headlines scream. They're not visual, they're auditory. The New York Times doesn't print auditory news, only printed news. It translates all news into a printed form. That's what it means fit to print. All the news that will fit the printed word. Or we print all news in the form of print, not in the form of hearing or feeling. In other words, it's a literary newspaper and all the news appears in editorial form. As far as I know, the only newspaper in North America that prints news as editorials. And uh, this is really worth study. I don't know how conscious they are of this. I'm not sure whether they are completely aware of what they're doing in this matter and have considered all the alternatives or not. Another feature you see that makes, that, you, uh, that is incompatible with this print form that the Times uses is the comic strip. They can't have comics. Comics are not fit to print because they don't belong to the printed form. Comics are tactile, sculptured icons. You were hearing about icons yesterday. One of uh, Mr. Parker's themes of yesterday will be my starting off point, Surah. The technique that Surah used for getting his image onto the canvas was that of little points, little flakes. And the light came through these points, not on to them. Rear view projection is his technique, light through. And when you have light through, audience participation is much greater. When you have light on, audience participation is almost zero. The person becomes a spectator looking at a picture, just like a movie. There's no participation there. That's why the thing is called uh, escapist. Nobody ever called TV escapism. Surah is very much like TV, very involving, very mosaic-like, very much light through. Joyce, Joyce, James Joyce calls TV the charge of the light barricade. The light comes through, charges at the viewer. It's an X-ray form. TV is X-ray. Not pictures. Anyone subjected to these tracers, to this bombardment, any child growing up in front of such a barricade naturally has an experience unknown to any previous generation. <clears throat> and those children who learned to read and write before TV are a very different crowd from those who learn to read and write just after TV. 
There is a sense in which the over 21s are a lost generation in the sense that they will never be able to make the same sensory adapt adaptation that the under 21s have made to this new environment of x-ray tracer shots. Those who had learned to read, in other words, to develop their visual sense in a very high degree before television, have a sort of cushion or immunity against TV. Well, those who didn't get that those immunizing shots before they went to school or before they sat in front of TV uh, have a, just a different attitude toward their sensory experience. The uh, involvement business, the whole hippie world, is straight TV involvement. And the use of all the senses at once, whereas the literate man coming up out of uh, his reading and writing courses uses primarily the visual sense as the point of orientation for all the other senses. But uh, this isn't possible, I think, for the uh, those who experience TV before they learn to read and write.